Hi, I'm Carl Azus with a summer session of CNN 10. It's great to see you this Tuesday, and we're kicking off the show with a sports report. Play ball is sounding out once again at Major League Baseball stadiums across America. The season was originally scheduled to get underway on March 26th, but it was delayed for months because of the coronavirus pandemic, and a shortened season of 60 games began on July 23rd and 24th. There have been cancellations, though. The Miami Marlins home opener last night was one of them, called off because at least 14 players and coaches tested positive for COVID-19. The National Basketball Association was in the midst of its 2019-2020 season when it had to postpone games because of COVID-19. NBA games are scheduled to resume in three days. 22 of the 30 teams are set to play eight remaining regular season games to determine who goes to the playoffs. According to ESPN, National Hockey League games are set to resume on August 1st. National Football League games are set to kick off as scheduled on September 10th. Major League Soccer has been back in action since early this month. But the games that are being played right now don't look the same and they don't sound the same. The crowds are missing. The cheers and boos are silent. Officials are still debating how to bring actual fans and not the cardboard ones back in the stadiums. And while people are allowed to attend some of South Korea's baseball games, major changes are easy to see. This is what a baseball game looks like in South Korea during a pandemic. As of today, Sunday, 10% of fans are allowed into the stadium to watch live. But of course, there are rules. You've got the, the markings on the ground to make sure there's social distancing within the, uh, the queuing itself. And then as you come in, gone are the days of flashing your ticket and walking in. You have to have a temperature check to make sure you have no kind of fever. It's in there. And if you do, there is actually a quarantine area just outside of the stadium in case there are those who have a high temperature. So the next part of the process is the QR code. Now this is to make sure they know exactly who is inside in case they need to do any kind of contact tracing. Now I will admit it took me a few times to try and download this technology, but it did work in the end. And there you go, simple as that. You scan it, they now know that I am inside. So if there is a problem or any kind of outbreak, they know exactly how to get hold of me. So just under 2,500 fans have been allowed inside this stadium and the tickets actually sold out online within less than an hour and a half according to officials. Now the fans are scattered throughout the stadium. No food or alcohol is allowed in the stands. The baseball is massive here. In the past games that I've been to, watching spectators is almost as much fun as watching the game itself. South Korean fans are known for their chanting, their singing, their dancing. Fans have also been asked not to chant as much in order to try and prevent saliva droplets. Now one father here with his 11 year old son tells me <laughs> to create the Korean baseball atmosphere everyone needs to come together. It's like a rock concert since we can't do that it's quite sad. There's always a competition between um, the fans as well there's a cheering section for a home team and a visiting team and they go back and forth. Now there's no doubt that it is not the same very little is the but for fans here, this is a very big step. Ten-second trivia. Which of these locations is known as the City of Big Shoulders? Amsterdam, Netherlands, Chicago, Illinois, Buffalo, New York, or Singapore? The answer is the Windy City, the Mud City, the second city in the city by the lake. It's Chicago. Chicago is one of the American cities whose growth reportedly has slowed down, and the reason could be because of shifting attitudes about where people want to live. Millennials now make up America's largest generation. Pew Research defines this group as people born between 1981 and 1996. That means they're in their mid-20s to late 30s today. And experts say changes in their outlook could change cities as we know them. The COVID-19 pandemic has many taking a fresh look at life outside cities. With two thirds of the country already living in the suburbs and beyond, in hard hit places like New York, some urban dwellers are contemplating what they might have once considered unthinkable, leaving. The value of the city to us was being around all the people, being able to go to all the restaurants and the culture, like the museums and the plays and everything. And so you remove all of that, um, it's difficult to justify paying the rent, being in a small confined space, and having no access to being outdoors by yourself. We're based in Darien, Connecticut. So in the first six months, which is really incredible when you think about 
how much business was not being able to be done during the pandemic. Um, Fairfield County as a whole did about $2.36 billion in sales, and that's 12% over the same period last year. And even better than that, you know, if we're just looking from the end of June to the end of June, pending sales are up 49%. It's, it's really skyrocketed. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is what we're like desperate for in the city. I know, it's so nice. Is just some outdoor space. It's not just the suburbs and greater metropolitan areas that are booming. People are also buying farther out, beyond typical commuter distances. It went from zero to 500 without any ramp up. The minute they relaxed it enough that people could really get into houses and people were at that point realizing that this was not going to end. I think the majority of what we've seen are people that have been considering moving to the suburbs from the city. And it's really kind of been the nudge that's got them to the burbs just with everything going on in the pandemic. And there's reason to believe an exodus was coming regardless. Millennials, who were responsible for much of the urban growth in the early part of the decade, are reaching an age where city life might have run its course. Since 2015 to 2020, uh, a lot of cities have not grown as rapidly as they did in the first half of the decade. So it's not just New York, it's Chicago, it's Los Angeles. It's, it's a kind of softening of growth among cities all over the country before the pandemic hit. But on the heels of the millennial flight, another generation may just be waiting for their apartments. Talked about people moving to cities 10 years ago. They were talking about millennials. You know, millennials are in cities. This is why cities are coming back. Well, now it's going to be the Gen Zers who are going to be part of that. And Gen Zers, even more so than millennials, are more racially diverse and have city roots. And they're used to living in this kind of arena. So, you know, once the economy comes back just a little bit, cities are going to be very attractive to Gen Zers, just like cities were attractive to millennials back when the Great Recession was at its peak. While few companies have yet to commit to a permanent work from home future, the question still remains, is this new normal here to stay? You might have heard of the Band of Brothers, the Band of Gold, the Band of Married Men. What about the One Love Machine Band? It's a project made up of scrap metal, air pressure pistons, and the imagination of an artist named Kolya Kuga. Here's how it sounds. When I built the band member, I start obviously with the music making part, the fingers, plugging or playing, and then I build the character behind it. The special thing about my robots is that they actually do play the music themselves. My robots play the bass guitar, the drum kit, and they play the flute. They got an affinity for punk rock. The whole band is called the One Love Machine Band. My robots perform all around the world tech events, uh, festivals, university lectures or TED Talks. When people see the robots, it's like they freeze for a while. There's this moment of, oh, what's going on here? And then it's uh, usually the, it's a childish gleam and, and the joy. I like to use scrap metal because there's so much waste in the world. You can't destroy, you can only make it better. My work is a constant game of chance and that's what I really love about it. Of course they use a drum machine, and one for everything else. It's cool to see how they all banded together, firing on all pistons to make their music play out, and it ends today's show on an up note. For CNN 10, I'm Carl Azus. <laughs>